question from Evan Woodbury from MLive. Hey Spencer, good morning. Good morning. Uh, did you uh, did you have to dig your first base glove out of storage yesterday, and, and how did it feel to be back out there? Uh, you know what, I did uh, a couple of days ago when they told me uh, I was gonna have a chance to get some more abs during spring training over at first base. So I did bring it out of the box, and it did feel good. You know, I'm I'm comfortable over there, and it was like it's like riding a bike. What AJ told us is basically you're going to play primarily at third this year, but it makes sense to keep you fresh at first, maybe once or twice a week. Is that basically what he conveyed to you or, or is that not come up yet? Yeah, that's exactly what he uh, said to me. You know, any way to get more at bats um, and any open position is uh, fine with me. And, and just in general, how how has your first spring training been so far uh, on the field and, and how's life at, at the rental house with, with Jake and Riley? Uh, you know, it's great. I'm finally getting a little bit used to uh, waking up a little earlier than I'm, you know, uh, used to, but uh, it's, it's a great time. Riley and Jake are great roommates and spring training's uh, exactly what I thought it'd be like. And it's a lot of fun and to be able to play baseball every day is a, a privilege and it's, it's fun. Thank you. Uh, Evan Petzl. Hey Spencer, just curious the uh, the can opener that 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 arrived and, and everything like that. What's the? Yeah, we, we got to get the backstory. We got we got a can opener before I got the stitches put in. <laughs> so what what all happened there with that specifically? Just to kind of get the you know the, the backstory on that one. I mean, the boys were hungry, and uh, I was I was in charge of dinner that night, and I was making this little corn uh, salsa, and it was a can of beans to put in it and uh, the Airbnb didn't have a can opener. And uh, we tried to improvise and we learned our lesson that uh, it's better to go to Walmart five minutes away and get a can opener. For sure, no, hey, on, on a more serious note though, um, looking at you in, in camp, I mean, you got a chance in summer camp to get to know some of these guys, but you know, now doing this again, kind of round two, is there a different mindset or a different approach or maybe different things that you're trying to pick and, and take away from certain guys? No doubt. I mean, I'm more comfortable, obviously, you know, uh, kind of getting thrown into the uh, summer camp, you know, fresh out of college. It was really eye opening and the game was moving a little faster. But now, I'm, you know, it's more laid back and um, I feel like I'm getting more out of it, which is which is great because you get a lot of work in during spring training. All right. And then last one for me. Can you define A.J. Hench? Uh, he's a he's a winner. You know, um, he's a great coach. Brought a great staff with them as well. And, uh, you know, they care about the players uh, first and foremost, which is a big deal. And they want to win. So, uh, you know, it's a, it's really it's a good uh, coaching staff to have because, you know, you can feel how much they care about the little things that are going to translate to wins. All right. Hey, thank you. Thanks, Evan. Uh, Chris McCoskey, Detroit News. Thanks. Thanks for doing this, Spencer. Appreciate you. Just just thinking last year at this time, how locked in you were, you know, you were like Barry Bonds locked in. You'd get three strikes a weekend and you'd hit them all out of the yard. Compare to that, how you felt to now with all the disjointedness that you've dealt with, you know, through the breaks and the shutdowns and the, you know, camps and inner squads. I mean, can you even like compare the, the two? Uh, no, it's really, it's really difficult to compare the two, to be honest with you. You're not facing, a, you know, a 20 year old taking classes every day you're facing you know a 25 year old that's been doing this for a living for a couple of years which is which is fun and it's it's great and I feel comfortable up there and um yeah so I mean you, as far as like you, your 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 comfortability in the box your your swing and and everything I mean that's all that's all unaffected I guess by all the disjointedness yes if it if everything feels great up there okay man thank you Thanks, Chris. Matt Shepard. Spencer, good to see you. Um, you told us earlier that you're always thinking a step ahead. What are you thinking in camp right now that tells us you're a step ahead? Uh, you know, as my mindset is, you know, you're trying to make the team. I know that uh, the chances are very unlikely, but if my mindset's that, I'll get, I'll put in the work and, um, you know, everything will fall into place and I'll get, become a better baseball player at every, aspect of the game and um i feel like like that will help me uh perform at the highest level 
you also told us you feel like you've dropped anchor at third base. Where have you improved most in that transition, do you think? I think it's just the feeling of being more comfortable. You know, over there at the start, you know, it was just playing baseball, catch it, throw it over there. But now it's like, all right, I know I've seen a lot of these balls hit at me and I'm not, nothing's new. And um, it's just a matter of comfortability and getting in-game reps, which I've gotten a lot more of since, you know, the start of summer camp. You said the game moves a lot faster. In what way and how have you adjusted, do you think? Um, I mean, guys are a lot stronger. Uh, they're grown men out there. They're faster, stronger. They throw harder. They, they hit the ball harder. I mean, it, it's all, uh, it comes with the job, I guess. But it's, it is really nice to be able to slow that game down and take a deep breath and be comfortable out there and uh, trust your, your work ethic and knowing that you know, the work you put in off the field is going to translate on the field as well. Yeah, lastly, for me, it's a good point. Uh, when we talk to other athletes that say in football, they'll often use that as an example. The game slows down. They read things differently. They see things differently. Mm -hmm. How can you get it to slow down, and, and, and in what way is it slowing down? How does baseball slow down for you? It comes over time, I believe. You know, getting those repetitions in practice day after day, um, nothing's new. You know, nothing surprises you out there, and uh, you know going into an at-bat or – an inning out in the field that anything comes your way, you're, you're ready for it. You're not surprised and uh, you're going to get the job done. Good. Good luck to you. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks, Shep. Uh, Nick Austin. Yeah, I was just curious, Spencer, how much, uh, you know, would you say you're running on just pure adrenaline right now with this being the, the first go round at spring? Um, once you get in the game, there's a, there's a good amount of adrenaline. You know, it's it's pretty surreal seeing fans back in the stands again. I know it's only, you know, 20% capacity or whatever it is, but uh, there's a different, you know, vibe to the games. You know, you're playing a different opponent that wants to get you out, and you got fans either rooting for you or rooting against you. So I miss, I miss that about it. And then, you know, when you step into that box right now, with it being that first spring, uh, we always talk about how mental, you know, approach and, and how much mental plays into this. Is, is there a, kind of a message that you are like saying to yourself in your head, stepping to that box right now? Uh, you know, you just got to keep it simple. It's uh, at the end of the day, it's the same batter's box that I've been hitting in, you know, since I've you know, started playing baseball. And um, that, you know, gives you some peace up there because, uh, I don't know how many pitches I've seen in my lifetime, but I've seen a lot. And uh, knowing that going into every at bat, it it, uh, it makes it a lot easier. And then Hinch was was saying that, you know, he's been poking fun at you a little bit and, and kind of trying to keep it loose. So I'm assuming, uh, you know, you can you can definitely take it. Are you dishing it out at all to any of these guys or, or giving it back to Hinch at all? You know, just, you know, it, it, I'm, not, just, I'm not there yet. I'm not there yet. I deserved it. You know, I took some heat in some meetings, but uh, it's all it was all in good spirits. And, you know, I think we're past that now. Thank you, man. Thanks, Nick. Uh, Jason Beck. Morning, Spencer. Thanks for doing this. And thanks for your sense of humor over the past week or so. Um, along those lines, I, I kind of wanted to ask about the uh, base running drills last week. It looked like even uh, Tram was giving you a little bit of grief out there on the field. Oh yeah, we're doing a uh, base running. Uh, that specific drill, we were doing like a double. You know, you start at home plate, you take a good turn, and I, I chose the wrong day to wear a brand new pair of plastic spikes on brand new bases, and um, kind of slipped under me. And you know, I didn't, I couldn't really give myself a break last last week. I I kind of went through it, but uh, I came back. I came back stronger. I promise. Did you did you give it back to anybody when you scored from first standing up on that uh, on that Jacoby Jones hit in Bradenton the other day? No, but uh, I'm glad I didn't fall. You know, that, was, that was a plus. <laughs> um, you know, you mentioned the adrenaline. How much was there for that first at bat in Bradenton? Because it looked like you. I mean, you were swinging pretty hard, but it also looked like you had a pretty good idea of what your strike zone was going to be, and you ended up, you know, drawing a walk there. Yeah, it felt great up there. Uh, of course, there was in some in-game adrenaline, but um, again, I just took a deep breath, slowed it down, and uh, stick to my, you know, old faithful approach, which is trying to stay in the middle of the field, 
getting a good pitch to hit and uh, taking your walk. Thank you, Spencer. Thanks, Jason. Uh, Cody Stavenhagen. Spencer, sorry, we're all trying to embarrass you this morning. Uh, do you feel like you usually have like goofy stuff happen to you or has it just been a rough week? Uh, you know, I think every everyone, you know, goes through it every now and then, you know, but uh, I chose I chose a pretty good time to do it. You know, first week of camp, uh, you know, spirits are high. We're all winners. And, uh, you know, it was, it was good fun. Yeah, I, I thought it was funny. You mentioned getting up early, too. I guess no one tells you about how early you have to get up in spring training. No, I that was new to me, but um, I enjoy getting to the field early and getting your work in. You know, it's uh, it's something to do. Yeah. Have you had any of those moments where it hits you and you're like, oh, I'm I'm in a big league spring training? Um, I haven't, but I can tell you my parents have because, you know, my dad yeah, has been a big baseball fan his whole life. And, you know, he t gave me a text, you know, my own son in major league spring training. Like I always dreamed of it, but now it's a reality. It's pretty cool. So um, I haven't had that moment, but I'm sure my family has, which is which is great. All right. Sure thing. Thank you, Spencer. Thanks, Cody. Uh, Dan Dickerson. Morning, Spencer. Hey, just uh, wondering, with a new hitting coach, what are some of the things that it didn't sound like you changed your swing a whole lot, didn't need changing last summer after you were drafted, but what are some of the things Scott Coolball is working on with you this spring? Uh, Cooley's big on controlling the baseball. You know, the pitcher's always trying to control the hitter, whether it's, you know, his timing and you know, messing with his head when he comes inside and throws a breaking ball away and stuff like that. So he's he's big on controlling the baseball. You know, don't let it um, beat you because uh, when you get you know stuck behind the ball and letting it get too deep, that's when you get you get beat. And so uh, I really like his mindset and what he teaches. You know, he's not mechanical, which is great. You know, these are all big league hitters. You know, you don't need to mess with their mechanics. It's all up in the, you know, it's all in the mindset from there. Um, but, you know, he, he does preach some really great things that uh, are clicking. And I know a, lo a lot of guys' heads and especially mine. In terms of like cage work and, and then the hitting on the field, um, are there guys that you like to watch? This? I mean, those are kind of two different things, but are, or are they more the same than, than you think in terms of hitting in the cage, hitting on the field? And are there certain guys you like to watch? Of course. I mean, Miggy is a great guy to watch. Miggy, of you course. Know, he, he controls the baseball better than anyone you know you've ever seen because he's done it a long time and seeing how he does it with such ease um is good to watch um from a you know like to coach yourself all right thank you spencer thanks dan take a couple more for spencer we'll go to jeff Seidel, detroit free press i have a different question but i just want to piggyback on what dan just asked so when you said attacking the baseball almost is that like an aggressive mindset or am i reading that way too simple it's like a, I don't know, like a, like a selective aggressive, you know, you're, you're slowing it down, but you can't, you know, go through the motions up there. It's a 95 mile an hour fastball. You, it's going to beat you if you're in literal slow motion, but you want to start early, slow it down. And then when it gets into the hitting zone, you're attacking. That's interesting. And my other question is, has there been one, like, what's the coolest moment that has happened to you? Like, since you've been there? Oh uh, gosh, there's, there's cool mo moments every day. I promise you. I think one of the craziest moments was showing up to the field for the away game, and uh, my bag was already packed. <laughs> you know, I'm not, I'm not used to that. That was pretty sweet. And cleats were all clean, all that stuff. Yeah, like what the heck? I did. My cleats were never clean. <laughs> <laughs> Do you have any idea who did that or no? Um, yeah, all, you know, all the clubbies are are great oh. guys, and they're they're there to help us out and. They do their job very well. Cool. Thank you. Jeff, and we'll wrap it up with Dick Scanlon, Lincoln Ledger. Yeah, Spencer, can you talk a little bit more about your position switch? Uh, how did how did the idea for that originate? And um, uh, did you play any third base in college or uh, previously? Um, I don't know where the idea, um, you know, started, but um, it wasn't, you know, unordinary I, I did take a couple reps over at third base in uh, in fall ball at, over at ASU and obviously I never played a, a competitive inning over there um, probably because our infield was so stacked that and but um, 
it's it, the transition's going great, and I'm, you know, as long as I'm on the field, I'm I'm happy. Do Do you consider that more your natural position, or is there, or or is it just a matter of getting good at two positions? I wouldn't consider any position, you know, a natural position. Um, I think it's just becoming a more complete ball player, being able to play third base, first base even a corner outfield position anywhere on the field to get in the lineup is uh, considered, you know, my position in my head. Thank you. Awesome. Thanks, Dick. Uh, Spencer, thank you for your time this morning. Uh, appreciate everybody joining us. Uh, we'll have uh, AJ Henry.